Hello, I'm Mommy Rella. Welcome to Tale as Old as Time. And now, Poor Unfortunate Soul, A Tale of the Sea Witch by Serena Valentino. Copyright 2016, Disney Enterprises Incorporated. Chapter 7, The Witch's Lair. After only a few days, far sooner than expected, Ursula heard stirring at the entry of her lair, shaped from the gasping maw of a sea creature's skeleton. She turned to see Ariel, following close behind Flotsam and Jetsam, just beyond the sharp teeth of the entranceway. She chuckled at the wide-eyed beauty, trembling in the darkness with her red hair floating in Ophelian fashion. Too fitting, Ursula thought as she laughed again. She had to admit this daughter of Triton's was a lovely little creature with her large blue eyes and bunny-like features. She looked remarkably like her mother, and it almost made Ursula sad to scheme against the near mirror image of the only person in Triton's kingdom who had treated her with the tiniest shred of kindness and respect. This way, Flotsam and Jetsam hissed, and Ariel shuddered. Poor dear was struggling in the garden of lost souls. If she'd had any sense about her, she would have escaped then. But luckily for Ursula, the minds of young girls with a rebellion in their hearts were easy targets for the likes of the sea witch. Triton had caused his own undoing when he drove his daughter away by destroying her collection of human trinkets and condemning her for loving a human. Well, her Aunt Ursula would take pity on the poor girl. She would take her to her breast and give her a chance to snare that handsome prince she had fallen in love with so she might leave her tyrannical father behind, alone, to be snatched by Ursula, who would then gain her rightful place as queen. Come in, come in, my child. We mustn't lurk in doorways. It's rude. One might question your upbringing. Ursula laughed as she swam to her vanity to touch up her makeup and add a little bit of flair and drama to the conversation. Now then, you're here because you have a thing for this human, this Sir Prince fellow. Not that I blame you. He's quite a catch, isn't he? Ursula laughed as Ariel listened, transfixed by the sea witch. Well... Angelfish, the solution to your problem is simple. Taking a page from the Odd Sisters' beauty book, she slathered on a brilliant layer of red lipstick. She pursed her lips and kissed them together to smooth the lipstick. Then she finished her thought. The only way to get what you want is to become a human yourself. Can you do that? asked the frightened mermaid. My dear sweet child, that's what I do. It's what I live for, to help poor unfortunate merfolk like yourself. Poor souls, with no one else to turn to. She hated performing, and the way it made her feel. But she found it was the very best way to get her victims' attention, to entrance them with a spectacle they couldn't resist. And she did love the opportunity for a bit of cheek. I admit that in the past I've been a nasty. They weren't kidding when they called me, well, a witch. But you'll find that nowadays I've mended all my ways, repented, seen the light, and made a switch. True? Yes. And I fortunately know a little magic. It's a talent that I always have possessed. And here lately, please don't laugh, I use it on behalf of the miserable, the lonely, and depressed. Hardly able to stomach her own words, she whispered to her minions. Pathetic. Poor, unfortunate souls. In pain. In need. This one longing to be thinner, that one wants to get the girl. And do I help them? Yes, indeed. Those poor, unfortunate souls. So sad. So true. They come flocking to my cauldron, crying, Spells, Ursula, please. And I help them. Yes, I do. Now it's happened once or twice. Someone couldn't pay the price. And I'm afraid I had to break them across the coals. Yes, I've had the odd complaint. But on the whole, I've been a saint to those poor, unfortunate souls. Now here's the deal. I will make you a potion that will turn you into a human for three days. Got that? Three days. Now listen, this is important. Before the sun sets on the third day, you've got to get dear old Princey to fall in love with you. That is, he's got to kiss you. Not just any kiss. The kiss of true love. If he does kiss you before the sun sets on the third day, you'll remain human permanently. But if he doesn't, you turn back into a mermaid and you belong to me. Ariel looked stunned. Have we got a deal? Ursula asked. If I become human, I'll never see my father or sisters again. That's right. But you'll have your man. Life's full of tough choices, isn't it? Oh, and there's one more thing. We haven't discussed the subject of payment. 
You can't get something for nothing, you know. But I don't have, said Ariel. Before she could finish, Ursula interrupted. I'm not asking much, just a token, really, a trifle. You'll never even miss it. What I want from you is your voice. My voice? You got it, sweet cakes. No more talking, singing, zip. But without my voice, how can I... You'll have your looks, your pretty face, and don't underestimate the importance of body language. The men out there don't like a lot of blather. They think a girl who gossips is a bore. Yes, on land it's much preferred for ladies not to say a word. And after all, dear, what is idle prattle for? Come on, they're not all that impressed with conversation. True gentlemen avoid it if they can. But they dote and swoon and fawn on the lady who's withdrawn. It's she who holds her tongue who gets a man. Come on, you poor unfortunate soul. Go ahead. Make your choice. I'm a very busy woman, and I haven't got all day. It won't cost much. Just your voice. You poor unfortunate soul. It's sad, but true. If you want to cross a bridge, my sweet, you've got to pay the toll. Take a gulp and take a breath, and go ahead and sign the scroll. Aria closed her eyes and signed the scroll, flinching from Ursula's power. The moment she finished, she knew she had made a mistake. A terrible mistake. What have I done? The scroll was signed and tight in Ursula's fist and quickly conjured away with her magic. Ariel wondered if she would be able to make the prince fall in love with her. And if she did, would her father ever forgive her? Was this boy she hardly knew worth it? Giving up her family? Her home? Her voice? She felt as if she were floating in a nightmare, in this hideous place surrounded by revolting creatures and Ursula's daunting voice as she said the magical words that would bind their contract. Beluga, Zavruga, come winds of the Caspian Sea. Loraxus glositis et max laryngitis lavochit to me. Aria wanted to scream. No, stop! I've changed my mind! But where would she go? Home to her father? who destroyed everything she'd loved when he blasted away her most prized possessions from the surface world? Her father, who had forbidden her ever to see Prince Eric? No, Ursula was right. She had no other choice. The sea witch's cauldron, which she'd been filling with ghastly ingredients collected for this purpose, was exploding with blue light that swirled around them like a menacing wall. Ariel's heart was pounding, thundering in her ears, and she felt a deep sorrow for betraying her family, and worse, for betraying herself. She knew her father would never forgive this. She knew he would never love her again. Ursula laughed. He will hate you, as he hates me. He hates all things different from himself, little angelfish. The swirling light transformed into large groping hands, greedy for Ariel's voice. Now, sing, Ursula commanded. The grossome hands grabbed at Ariel's throat, starting to take from her the thing that most made her who she was. Her voice. The sensation was terrifying. It hadn't occurred to Ariel that losing her voice would be so painful. It was like a separate entity struggling to remain within her, and Ursula was literally tearing it from her throat, from her soul. The pain was terrible. She tried to let it go willingly, to stop struggling, but she couldn't. Everything within her fought against the assault, and then it happened. Her beautiful, beautiful voice. It flowed from her lips involuntarily. Keep singing, Ursula screamed, and her laugh was heard throughout the many kingdoms as her cauldron cast a golden light that surrounded Ariel, ripping her mer-body asunder, turning the mermaid into the thing her father hated most, a human. A human under the sea. It wasn't Ursula's concern that she could no longer breathe underwater. She will have to find a way to the surface. Or not. Thank you so much for listening. Please like and subscribe. Make sure to ring that notification bell to keep up to date on all the new magic coming out. And remember, let it go and keep moving forward. Have a magical day.